G'day guys, Russell from Australia. Uh, behind me is my uh, Group N touring car. And uh, I noticed the valve clearance on the rockers uh, changed. Now I check these religiously after every meeting. Um, it's a TND Sportsman rocker uh, system. I bought them at the time uh, because they were about half the price of their top of the line range. Um, but I didn't realise that uh, they didn't have pressure fed oil to the bearings. So uh, after checking valve clearances, I found uh, a couple had gone, you know, a couple of there. I think one was two there, one was three there. I thought, yeah, that's not right. So I adjusted them, uh, did a race meeting, came back. Uh, one had only changed probably one thou, but the other one had gone like seven thou. And I went, whoa, you know, there's something wrong here. Let's go and investigate. And what I found was the shafts were wearing because essentially they're just splash fed. Now, that's what I bought. It's probably wrong for my application in hindsight, but I'm stuck with these rockers. Um, I either throw them in the bin and they're you know, relatively expensive rocker system, or I uh, thought, well, I can modify them and make them essentially the same as their top of the line series rocker. But I had to buy some parts and I had to do some drilling, so this is what that's about. So I pulled two rockers and then a, a third. Um, one was about seven thou extra clearance and that's the resulting look of the shaft, which is quite bad. Um, you know, it's it's good on the other side because that's not the loaded side. Um, the next one had worn on one side but not the other except for a tiny little line there. Um, I think it changed, it was two or three thou. Uh, and then the last one, no problems at all. But if you look at it, it's got a little line there, which is where uh, it's starting to go. So you've got to do the full 16. You can't just replace the odd shaft. So what I did was I looked online at uh, the TND site because in my head I remember something about them being pressure oil fed. These weren't, and, and that's because they're the Sportsman series. So how to lubricate the bearings or pressure feed lubricate the bearings. So what you have to do is you have to drill a hole in here. You see a picture of this on their um, top end roller system on TND site. And you have to drill another hole here to feed the roller tip. And the oil will come up. Um, through this adjuster and you have to buy a different adjuster so if I go down here to this adjuster this is the original one and the oil feed goes straight through and out the other side so all the oil just goes up and hits the tap cover and then splashes down you know lubricates the shaft lubricates the, the roller tip on the valve and lubricates the roller shaft as well and while there's, there's no problem with the roller shaft that's actually quite good. But the new uh, adjuster only has a hole that goes up till it meets that existing hole. You can see my little pin there. Um, and then it comes out this hole and around this groove. So the really important part is this uh, hole that you drive drill through here has to intersect with the groove in this adjuster otherwise the thread just blanks it off and then the second thing you have to do is because I've drilled a hole from the outside through here you have to uh, bung the end here which I'll lift this up and show you there's a little bung there The reason for the bung in, in the end of the rocker from where you've drilled it is there's a chance that the oil will still migrate up to the groove, up, up the thread maybe a little bit and st start coming out the back side. You need all the oil going forward that direction so you've got a little 
bung that you have to make up and put in the end of the rocker. Okay, how to make a bung. Um, the hole drilled at about 64 thou. 16th is um, 62 and a half, but they always drill bigger. So I'm thinking, what can I use to, to make a little bung? I, I, I thought about, um, you know, tapping a thread in the end and putting a little screw there and thinking, I don't need to make it that complicated. It's a very small hole. It's not going to push it out. So I thought about uh, putting epoxy in there, um, but then I couldn't be, be sure that I wouldn't get a bubble and there wouldn't be much epoxy. I thought, if I can lock tight a little pin in there, that's it. Um, so I, I searched the workshop and I found all my rivets were about 68 thou, and 68 thou doesn't go into a 64 thou hole. It's way too much interference fit. So I literally found this plastic coated wire, I don't know what it's from, but anyway, it actually measures 64 thou. So, but it, it, it's probably 63 and three quarters. It, it just had a little bit of looseness. So what I, what I did was I put this on the edge of my vise tap the end with a hammer so it was slightly oval, put a knob of Loctite on it, cut it off back here, tapped it in the hole, and then and then felt it, you know, wriggle it, yep, nice and tight. Um, cut it off with a set of side cutters, and then uh, lensed it on the grinder uh, till it just sat, just proud of the rocker without grinding the rocker. So that solved that problem. The rest of the ore flow is, uh, this is uh, 900 thou wide, two bearings together are uh, uh, 865, that leaves a 35 thou uh, gap between the bearings, which means when the oil um, flows up and gets down here to the bearings, um, it, it's got plenty of room around the bearings to, to lubricate them. Oil spills out either side or also goes through to that hole and lubricates the roller tip. How to um, get the angles. So these angles here, how to get them right. Um, I made up this little jig. I'll take the spacer off for a second. So it's a bit of scrap steel. This one obviously had a hole already through it. I Spun that up on a lathe, that's the only thing, if, if you're doing this at home, you might have to get that spun up. I think it was seven eighths of an inch, but don't quote me on that. Um, so this, uh, this is a stopper here, just a roll pin. So weld it together, made so it was all parallel to the base. Um, yeah, that looks parallel. Um, lay it down so you can see the rocker uh, goes over the shaft and sits up hard against there. So uh, essentially you've got a hole running, let's see if I can draw this freehand, up to there. So when it's sitting uh, in the, the drill, um, measured down to this bit here, uh, this pinhole, um, centre popped it by eye. I could make a little jig that folds over to get that in the center and as soon as I've got 16 it might be worth the time but anyway um, so you're drilling down uh, through the rocker uh, till it hit the shaft um, and, and you're holding it all place so it doesn't fall fall back so with, with this on here uh, the other side I had to turn this around so I, I turned it around um, and I had to get it at the right uh, angle and that, that was too far so I had to bring it back so I was going to make a little uh, spacer that sat over the pin and then in the end I just found this laying around um, that goes over the pin yeah I know it's not centered on the pin but it doesn't matter because if I push it up there or push it any any way um, you push that down it neatly follows get my fat finger out of the way, it neatly, neatly follows through here. So if I push that up, like that, and then I push it down, it always comes to the same position. So um, we end up with a hole, vertical hole again, 
in in the dr drill press, you know, down like that. You got to remember, there's the cutout underneath through there. The trouble is, um, this one very hard to center pop it with with a with a normal center pop, which is like this big thing. So um, you you need a thin center pop just to put a mark because you're going just past the roller. Like if I hold the camera, uh, get this get the light on it. You know, you're holding it like that. So the drill runs down the edge of the roller, but it's solid. Actually, that's probably the rub mark there. Might, might be, yeah. Okay, so that's that done. I pressed the bearings in, or before I pressed, or actually I pushed, pushed the bearings in, but I didn't put the shaft in. I put an ore can here. I put my fingers either side of the, the rocker, so I just held it like that and kept squirting with this sitting vertical and uh, oil come out of the the little hole there on the on the roller side so I, I therefore knew all this was lined up and it worked as I said uh, the critical part is uh, the in the intersection of the thread and the hole and I also said I, I moved this one uh, just a little bit higher Okay, that's about it after I'm telling you I hate doing these videos, but I like sharing information So, you know, I'm up to about Eight takes of this at different stages then I edit it all but uh, I hope the information was uh, helpful um, how to rescue a set of rockers uh, how to not buy the wrong ones, but you know, I, I didn't know at the time and I didn't have the money at the time. So um, I think that's all I've got to tell you. Uh, there's another video I did just recently on NASCAR engine blocks, Cleveland ones versus normal block. And uh, there's a couple of other uh, videos of me racing in the uh, GDHO Falcon replica in the background. So uh, thanks for watching. And we'll uh, catch you next time. Cheers.